Um, hi. It took me a while to get back, lots of stuff to do, saving the world from religious alien alliances and stuff, you know, the usual. Anyway, something has recently been brought to my attention, which is the fact that most new players likely come from D&D 5e. That in itself is quite obvious, but not so obvious for me, were how difficult the transition to this completely different system could be. So I'll be commenting on characteristics, modifiers and rolling today, trying to explain how rolling works and how to make keeping all the modifiers in mind as easy as possible. You know how to set up characters by now, I already have that covered. Next thing you want to do is use them, obviously. So let's start with the most simple roll, a reactionary perception check. Steve's player rolls a d100 and tries to undershoot his perception characteristic, therefore the target value would be 42. Anything above is a fail, so that's easy enough. Next step is the comparison to the one sneaking up on him, in this case a Promethean Crawler. The GM rolls a d100 for the NPC as well on a target value of 55, its agility of 45 as per the bestiary, and its athletics of plus 10 as per GM decision to move silently. Steve rolls an 11, the GM a 24, so what does that mean? Per full 10 below the target value, you score one degree of success. Those are then compared to each other, and we see that both characters scored three degrees of success. No winner can be determined like that. Next step is to compare the characteristic modifier, so the first digit of their respective characteristic. Both modifiers are the same again, both are a 4. At this point, the GM can decide to include the crawler's mythic agility of 4 and therefore have the crawler win, but because there is no mythic perception, he deems that to be unfair and moves to step 3. The last resort for an opposed test is to simply roll a dice each and have the higher result come out on top. Alternatively, a tie such as this can go in favor of the PC as they represent heroic characters who have fate itself helping them. Just decide on a ruling before this occurs. See how quickly you learn to deal with the most unlikely of opposed tests? Now let's add modifiers to the situation. Let's go through all the modifiers both of them get by persistency, starting with the attacker if you will, the crawler. The crawler gains a permanent modifier of plus 10 due to its athletic skill as stated before. It's permanent because it's baked into the character's sheet and is really hard or even completely impossible to remove. Players keep track of these as they always see their own sheet. As for temporary modifiers, the crawler was shot at before and has an injury, if you want to call it that, which impedes its movement capabilities, granting a minus 5 penalty. I consider it temporary because while not permanent, it will persist for longer than a single scene, these modifiers are also written down somewhere and therefore the player, again, is responsible to consider them. Lastly, there are situational modifiers. They are not permanent and are very restricted by location, time and such things. In this case there are none applied, instead Steve will be granted several bonuses instead. As the GM explains the scenes and collects what all the characters do to then describe the outcome overall, by and large these are the GM's responsibility. I advise to write down the most important features of the situation or scene, visible to everyone, just because multiple people are smarter than a single one. Let's go through Steve in the same manner. As the test is reactionary, he doesn't get to use any skills and he doesn't have any passive abilities like exceptional hearing that would be granting him bonuses. His temporary modifiers look similar, he is not injured due to his high resilience and damage shrug nor is he granted bonuses by performance enhancing drugs or anything of that sort. Now we get to a bunch of situational modifiers. The sheer bulk is the reason I'm making this video so try to keep up. We consult page 71 of the 3.5 core rules for listening to noises. First of all the ground type is rocky dirt so let's say it's a plus 10. Additionally there are puddles everywhere due to stormy weather so let's give him another plus 5 for an inch of water. Then the crawler is wearing armor, obviously, as he's a robot. So that's another plus 15, adding up to plus 30 so far. He gets a few penalties as well, resulting from the stormy weather. Due to heavy rain and strong winds, the noise is on par with his small arms shootout, therefore he gains a penalty of minus 20. After calculation of all modifiers, the new target values are 50 and 52 respectively, 
giving Steve the clear win after rolling the same results of 24 and 11. He's now aware and won't be ambushed. Not by that one at least. There's always a bigger fish. Let's recollect everything I just threw at you. You learned about rolling, target values and modifiers, then you streamlined the collection of modifiers, first all bonuses, then all penalties, from permanent to fleeting. One last word, get creative in your handling of situations, the next positive modifier is just around the corner. Okay, you should now be prepared to do whatever you need to do. Now get out there and make me proud. Dismissed. <laughs>